So as I've said many times, I have a huge list of movies and TV shows that I always mean to get to, but then for whatever reason, I just don't. The Percy Jackson movies have been on this list for like years at this point. You know, I should really get around to doing the Percy Jackson movies one of these days. And I've just been saying that like every six months. Well, with the Disney Plus Percy Jackson remake coming out in December, it's finally time. Okay, I swear I'm doing it. I'm watching the Percy Jackson movies. So the first one came out in 2010, the height of supernatural YA movies. You know what I mean? Twilight was going strong. Harry Potter was wrapping up. A couple years after that, we got like Hunger Games, Divergent, Maze Runner. And among all of these, only Percy Jackson was so bad that it needed a remake. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm telling you, I watched this movie and like, what the heck even was this? Let's take a walk and I'll show you what I mean. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Raycon. Absolute top quality earbuds for like half the price of all the other best ones, okay? That's Raycon. You know those other dumb earbuds, the white ones that people think make them look cool, they walk around like this for some reason? <laughs> those ain't no Raycons. People out there paying $250 for that? Now, I've been using these for years, actually, and I gotta say, Raycons are pretty good. They sound incredible. They don't fall out of my ears, which is actually something that happens quite a bit with other ones. And let me tell you, these dudes last a long time, okay? The website says 32 hours, and I believe it. I mean, these earbuds have like Nintendo DS Lite levels of battery life, okay? And for all you hardcore listen to sounders, which would be my dystopian YA fiction group name, by the way, they have the new fitness earbuds. Sweat proof, even more battery life, less than $100? You kidding me right now? Raycon is really making a name for themselves, not just in quality affordable audio, but also they got home and tech products now, like the Magic 180 cable, which is a lightning and USB charging cable you can rotate. They got Raycon faucet filters now? Come on, I'm telling you, Raycon's really stepping things up. So if you're in the market for new earbuds or, you know, there might be a couple gift-given holidays coming up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can get early access to their Black Friday deals right now. If you head over to buyraycon.com slash Myers and you're going to get 20 to 50% off the entire site. So don't miss it. Okay, back to the show. The movie starts out with us seeing a giant man walking out of the ocean who then becomes a small man. And here we get the entire premise of the movie just dumped on us all at once. Zeus, Poseidon, with no lightning, stolen. You're accusing my son. If your son is the thief, he must return the bolt to me by midnight on the summer solstice. You know, I love how these Greek gods are just two dudes from the UK. I mean, come on, what are they gonna do? Make them Greek or something? We then do a hard cut over to our main character, Percy Jackson, just your average high school kid who can hold his breath underwater for a really long time. <laughs> Percy Jackson is a beast. You're a beast, man. Give me some. <laughs> how long was that? Seven minutes. Seven minutes? Mm-hmm. Oh. That's crazy, man. That's ridiculous. You know, I've always been jealous of people who have friends who hype them up, you know, instead of just like changing the subject whenever you come around. That's fun. Or really any friends, to be honest, because I'll tell you, when you hit your 30s, your friend group goes like, Hey, save the date! I'm getting married for the fourth time! I will learn nothing from this experience. But all the same, this is Perkum Drackum, the local loser nobody at his high school with the most 2010 haircut you'll ever see in your life. This dude looks like the guy from Smosh. Remember back when every YouTuber looked like this and no one was committing felony crimes or child endangerment? Man, what a heck of a time that was. Anyway, so this is where we start to learn a little more about who this kid is. Would someone please explain what Shakespeare was trying to convey in this line from Othello? Percy Jackson? I'm sorry, I don't know. Yeah, so the movie really wants us to believe that even though he looks like a Hollister model and can hold his breath underwater forever, he's actually just some nobody loser guy because he has dyslexia. Because, hey, you know, if there's one group of kids in high school who never get popular, it's hot guys who can't read. Anyway, so feeling sorry for himself, he goes home to straighten his bangs some more. Hey, Mom. How was school today? The usual. I think this, uh, dyslexia thing is getting worse. Oh, why do you think that? I don't know. Maybe it's the ADHD. I don't even get me started on my alters, Mom, okay? You just wait till they invent TikTok and it's all over for you, normies. Now, this all wasn't bad enough. We also learn about why home is the only place Percy hates more than being at school. Well, none. Hi, Gabe. <sighs> Where's my beer? It's in the fridge. So what, it's supposed to magically float from the icebox and into my hand? That's right, Percy has a new stepdad who's just a, a real winner, you know what I'm saying? Why do you stay with that pig? He smells like a sewer. He sleeps till noon every day and he can't even hold a job. Why do you stay with him? He's been good to us, Percy, in ways you just, you don't understand. Anyway, so the next day, I think, Percy's class goes to this Greek gallery museum place thing where he finds out that his dyslexia actually means that he can read ancient Greek of all things. And then he finds out that his teacher is actually a demon monster who's trying to kill him. Wow, what a day. Oh, whoa, hey, hey. 
How did you get up there? Now, his friend Grover and this other teacher overhear this. No one else in the entire museum does, of course, but whatever. Anyway, and they help him escape. He runs back home to his mom, and turns out everyone else is in on some kind of big secret except for him. Pound down! Whoa! Nice one. Like I said, I'm your protector. Sally, Percy has to leave now. Like, right now. <laughs> So Percy, his mom, and Grover all hop in the car and drive to somewhere in the Vancouver countryside where they get attacked by a minotaur who just like totally disintegrates the mom. And then Percy passes out and wakes up in a secret camp called Camp Half-Blood. Just the most literal camp name you could give it. Imagine if like every summer camp did that. All right, kids, welcome to your first day at camp. Uh, the older kids are going to literally try to murder you and the counselor is going to do nothing about it because he's only like four years older than the rest of you anyway. How is this legal? But yeah, anyway, so Percy wakes up in this camp. You've been unconscious for three days. Three days? Thing, whoa. Yeah. Politically correct term is Seder. No, 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 no. Oh man, come on, Grover. You're one of those kids. I thought you said you liked My Little Pony for the writing. No. All of it was real. My mom's gone. <laughs> Yeah, Percy, I, I, I can tell you're just really torn up about the whole thing. Aw, oh, man, my mom just got crushed to death by a minotaur? Whoa, that's crazy. Anyway, this is where Percy learns that he's actually half Greek god, half human. And this camp, Camp Half-Blood, is for kids like him. So they can all come together and learn the importance of the ancient Greek battle tactics, apparently. This is Camp Half-Blood. Half meaning what? I think you know. Half meaning half mortal, half god. Fire! Whoa, guys, watch the arrows. <laughs> Remember what Mr. Bruner said? Sometimes they come down to Earth and they fall in love with mortals. But of course, Percy doesn't believe any of this nonsense. I mean, come on, how could someone like him be a demigod? See, man, this place right here, it's the place where you learn to harness your powers. I think you have the wrong guy, all right? I'm not a hero, I'm a loser. Yeah, Grover, come on, look at me. A hot guy with emo hair and skater jeans in 2010? Literal rock bottom right here. I have dyslexia, ADHD. And those are your greatest gifts. That's because your brain's hardwired for ancient Greek, not English. And you're ADHD? You're impulsive, Percy. You can't be still. Those are your natural battle reflexes, man. <laughs> wait, wait. That's right, everybody. <laughs> the real superpower is mental disability. <laughs> Okay, the truth is, you have dyslexia because actually you can read ancient Greek, and your ADHD is because you have the mind of a warrior who also had ADHD, apparently. Oh, and all that crippling anxiety you have? That's because you have the soul of an ancient Greek philosopher. But, like, one of the cool ones, though, not not the weird ones who, like, live in bathtubs and take a dump in front of a church or whatever. Uh, yeah, that's cool and all, but uh, all I really wanted was just to not have a panic attack when I go to the McDonald's drive-thru. But anyway, going around the camp some more, they come upon a certain someone who makes Percy be all like, <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> She was squashy like a bug. Her name. Annabeth, daughter of Athena, the goddess of wisdom. Well, apparently she's not wise enough to wear a hair tie when she's doing all this. What kind of idiot would fight like this? Also, we learned that his teacher in the wheelchair from earlier, that guy's actually a centaur. <laughs> Mr. Bruner? In my world, I'm known as Chiron. Are you recovered? Am I recovered? You, you're... Not in a wheelchair, you... You know, jokes aside, okay, I do appreciate that they're trying to put a positive spin on, like, mental and physical disability, you know? You're not broken, you're special or whatever, like, I get that. But it seems kind of weird that they're like, this guy's in a wheelchair because he's actually a centaur, and this guy's legs don't work because he's half goat. Like, I don't know how inspiring that's gonna be to someone who's actually like this. But anyway, after this, we get more lore dumping. My father's Poseidon. God of the seas. Why didn't anybody tell me? It was for your own safety. It's exceedingly rare for a child to be born to one of the big three. The big three, of course, refers to Poseidon, Zeus, and Hades. Now, I don't know much about the other two, but I'm pretty sure Zeus's whole thing was making a whole lot of babies, you know what I'm saying? A threat. A threat? Who am I threatening? Zeus and Hades? That's why your mother married your stepfather. His pungent odor masked the smell of your blood. <laughs> Now, wait, so his mom specifically found the smelliest guy she could to hide her son from the gods? Oh my god. How is this a real movie? Anyway, so they're, 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let's start again. So as per what we saw earlier, someone stole Zeus's lightning bolt and everyone thinks it was Poseidon's secret son, Percy, for some reason. And they need to find this bolt and bring it back in 10 days or else Zeus will destroy everything, because that makes sense. Zeus's bolt is the most powerful weapon ever created. And if it's not returned by the summer solstice in 10 days, there will be a war. This is your problem, all right, not mine. Olympians would be forced to choose sides. Earth would become a battleground. Mountains erupted, earthquakes, raging fires. But for now at least, Percy has to stay at this camp because it has a magic force field around it that's gonna stop all the bad guys from finding him and doing bad guy stuff. And later on, there's this part where Percy and Annabeth get in a sword fight and like Percy loses, but then he takes like one sip of water and just beats up the whole camp. In slow motion, of course, because that's how you know he's cool. Anyway, so that night, all the kids are hanging out doing teenager stuff like making out and riding skateboards. But then this happens. Percy Jackson, bring me the bolt. Hand it to me, and I will exchange it for your mother. You know, Percy, I'm not sure if this raging fire demon of death is the most trustworthy individual, okay? Yeah, so remember how the camp is supposed to not let anything bad in, and no one knows Percy's here because there's a force field, and then Hades literally shows up, and he's like, ah, yes, hello, Percy Jackson. So naturally, Percy, Grover, and Annabeth, for some reason, they all team up to sneak out of the camp and find a way to the underworld to tell Hades that Percy does not have the bolt, and it would be pretty sweet if he could just, like, let his mom go, my dude. And so they get some help from Luke, the camp leader guy, who's also the son of Hermes, the messenger god. What are you guys up to? We're going to get my mom back. Your dad is the messenger of the gods. One of the only ones who's gotten in and out of the underworld. Getting in's the easy part. Getting out, well that's tricky. This is a map to Persephone's pearls. You mean Hades' wife? Okay, so basically what they have to do is find these three pearls that Hades' wife Persephone left on Earth that will allow them to leave the underworld after they get Percy's mom back, okay? And then the movie suddenly just turns into like a road trip flick where they use the not Marauders map to find the magic pearls, all of which coincide with some famous Greek mythology monsters like Medusa. Boom! We're in Medusa's lair. In a body! Well, this is a fabulous surprise. <laughs> this, this movie, man. I've never seen Greek mythology look less cool than in this movie. Or then they have to fight a Hydra in Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> Like, not only are all the Greek gods and monsters real, right? But also, they're all located in the USA, of all places. Wow, what are the chances? And the whole time, we get the privilege of Grover's endless cavalcade of one-liners. Uh, is it me, or is it raining cows? That's nasty. The health department needs to get this place an F. Nashville? Oh, great. Home of my least favorite music. I got a few dead people you might recognize. Jackson, Grant. Benjamin Franklin. Now, while they're on this trip, they also find out that Percy's stepdad is kind of making a scene back home. The missing boy, Percy Jackson, and his mother, Sally Ugliano. Talk to me about your son, Percy Jackson. No, he's not my son. He's stepson. Five nights ago, he tried to kill me, and he threw his mother on the ground, and his... Uh, do, 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 do you get it? It's because he's half goat, and, and goats eat garbage, and so, so he's eating the soda can? Do, 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 do you get it? And knocked me out. When I woke up, Sally was gone. She was kidnapped by Percy. She would oh, never- shut up, Gabe. Guy. Great. Now I'm a fugitive. Oh no, what are they gonna do? This is totally gonna mess up their whole plan, right guys? Oh, what's that? This has no effect on anything in the movie and they just keep on driving across the country, staying in hotels and eating at restaurants and it never comes up ever again? Huh. Isn't that something? And so they go from New Jersey to Tennessee and then all the way to Las Vegas, which is like a 26 hour drive, by the way. This movie sure is giving us a real tangible sense of urgency here. All right, guys, we gotta hurry and find those pearls, get to the underworld, save my mom before the world gets destroyed, okay? Come on, guys, there's no time to lose. <laughs> Anyway, so long story short, they get the three pearls, they open the gate to the underworld, which turns out is the Hollywood sign. <laughs> you know what this movie is? Okay, this movie's like National Treasure meets Spy Kids, all right? But anyway, they get to the underworld, they talk to Hades and his insanely hot wife, because surely Hades will see that this is all just a misunderstanding, right? I mean, come on. You give me the bolt and I'll give you your mother. I need to tell you the truth. I'm... I'm not the lightning thief. Oh, he said the name of the movie! Rotten Tomatoes score 48%? Pfft, more like 48,000%. Why did you come here then? Well, I was hoping that when you saw that I wasn't the thief, you'd let my mother go. So then he summons up Percy's mom and Percy goes to give her a hug and he drops this shield that he got from Luke earlier in the movie. And inside that shield, what do you know? It has Zeus's bolt, what? 
That's right, turns out Luke, son of Hermes, stole the bolt and was trying to frame Percy the whole time so that Hades could defeat Zeus and Poseidon or something. Luke, why do you want to war the gods? They've been in power for too long. I say it's time for our generation to take over. Remold the world in our image. A world of new heroes. So here's the situation, okay? They only have 10 minutes until Zeus starts his God War thing. And so then, obviously, Luke and Percy have a fight scene that goes on for about four hours. And ultimately, Percy gets the bolt back and they escape to Mount Olympus, which is inside the Empire State Building, because of course it is. Lou, he's got two minutes! Yeah, so not only did all the Greek gods immigrate to the US at some point, but also the gateway to Mount Olympus is in New York City and has to be turned on with breaker switches. <laughs> Anyway, so the end of the movie is Percy Jackson giving the bolt back to Zeus, and then the war is stopped just at the last second. And then Percy and Poseidon have a little heart-to-heart -heart talk where Poseidon's like, hey, hey, sorry I like left you alone and stuff. My brother told me that I couldn't hang out with you anymore. Oh yeah, well guess what, Dad? Thanks to you, I write Sonic the Hedgehog fanfic now. And then Percy goes back to camp with Grover and Annabeth and just has to be a half-god now, as you do. Hey! Hey! Oh, Percy, watch oh, out! Hey, whoa, you guys gonna hey. kill the man and save the world? Great job. All you guys take a lunch break. Gee, I don't know, guys. Maybe don't walk in front of them? Maybe you're the problem. You ever thought of that? And of course, at the very, very end, Percy realizes that he has a big old crush on Annabeth, the girl who looks an awful lot like his mom. <laughs> I mean, these two could totally be like brother and sister, which is actually the only semi-accurate depiction of Greek mythology in this movie. But all the same, that's pretty much the end. So this movie is very loosely based on the best-selling book and directed by Chris Columbus from Harry Potter fame. And like, it's so obvious that they really thought that this was gonna be the next Harry Potter. And I'll tell you right now, it definitely was not. It did get a sequel though in 2013, which was apparently somehow even worse. And I, for one, cannot wait to check it out. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please watch another one because that's how the algorithm works. So click on this one that's being recommended to you right now, right here on the screen. It actually helps a lot if you do that because like that's how YouTube knows that my videos are worth caring about. Also, if you have any movies or TV shows you'd like to recommend, send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com and I'll put them on my absurdly long list of movies that I need to get to at some point. Anyway, hope I made your day a little bit better and I'll see you all next time.